Well, good morning YouTube. Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. Today I'm going to be talking about the Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder. The average person watches my videos for about three minutes, maybe four. I can't explain anything in three or four minutes. So, And uh, I'm going to do my best to keep the information and the length of the video as short as possible, but it needs to be what it needs to be in order for me to get my point across. So just a little bit of quick history on me and welding. I have no experience. <laughs> I've played around with this welder a little bit, but I am not a welder. If you've come here looking for welding tips, this is probably not the right video for you. But if you've come here because you have an interest in welding and you're interested in the probably the cheapest welder you can find on the internet or darn close to it the Harbor Freight 90 amp and you want to follow a guy that's just learning how to do this stuff and uh, strictly from a hobby standpoint then maybe you'll find some you'll have some interest in these videos so let's have a look at the welder here item number six eight 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 seven I think this welder is about five or six years old I can't remember that's how long I've had it I can't remember exactly what year I purchased it but I bought it at Harbor Freight of course and I used the uh, coupon and all that I think uh, the best I can recall I paid ninety dollars for it this is a flux core wire welder it does not use gas it uses shielded flux core and it also does not require anything more than a 120 volt outlet. At the end of this video, I'm going to show some sample welds that I've done with this welder recently so that I have a baseline for comparison. I just need the best welds that I could produce with this machine as is because I'm going to be doing some modifications to it trying to improve its performance. If I had it to do all over again, I would not probably not buy this particular welder. When I did buy this welder, I needed something that was 120 volt so that I could plug into a regular house outlet. I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. And, you know, I'm not that much better now, but I have done a bunch of research. I would not buy this particular welder. I would buy something different. And the biggest problem with this welder is it is an AC machine, alternating current machine. I'm going to convert this AC welder into a DC negative electrode. They call that uh, DCEN, D-C-E-N, DC direct current electrode negative, which means the stick or the gun will have the neg negative polarity and the ground cable will have the positive polarity. As it is right now, AC, 60 times per second, I believe, 60 hertz here in the US, half of the time the gun is negative polarity and half the time the gun is positive and it pulses back and forth between the two. And that's what creates some of the problems. Flux core wire is meant to be run DC negative electrode. It right off the bat, that's one of the biggest flaws. It is not the right machine to be running this type of wire, which this is the only type of wire you can run in this machine. So there's a few things that you can do to this machine right off the bat to help improve its performance. One of them is this tip, this nozzle. So if I can set this up here, hopefully. So the way the machine comes, it comes with this copper nozzle over the top of the tip. Now, this is designed for a welder that has gas, provides shielding gas for your weld, so that it, the gas comes out of the gun through this nozzle and it shields right where the weld is happening, right where the wire comes out. It's shielded with gas. This, obviously, this machine and this wire does not require the gas, so this is not, not necessary. It just gets in the way, and it sticks out too far from the tip. 
this sticks out probably an eighth or almost a quarter of an inch beyond the tip this is the contact tip right here that brass piece and then this is the wire this sticks out a little bit too far and it makes it real difficult to get the proper stick out and to see what you're actually doing so one of the first easiest improvements to this machine from what I've researched online is to remove this tip and this particular one some of them pull off this one just just screws off of there so I've removed the tip I coated the threads with Teflon tape just to keep splatter out of the threads which I don't know why I've done that it may I, I don't ever plan to put the tip back on there but you can buy a, a flux tip for this that just almost comes to a point and is the proper length I may end up getting one of those in the future we'll see so I don't want to mess up those threads and that's why I put the Teflon tape on there now this is the first time here just recently that I've welded with this machine with the tip removed and I will tell you it is a huge difference as far as being able to see what you're doing in the weld pool without have by having that tip removed so that was a good improvement it doesn't improve any performance it's still an AC machine but that's number one number two is the wire now again back when I purchased this I purchased a couple of spools these are little uh, two pound spools from what I have under understand is the Harbor Freight wire is no good now they have some new wire it's the Vulcan wire it may be better quality I think it probably is from what I've what I've seen but uh, this is the old stuff 030 two pound spool I'm using that I'm almost done with that reel and then I've got this spool here and I'm going to use it up since I'm not welding anything of any kind of importance and uh, burn that up to get practice and then I'm going to buy probably some of the Lincoln wire which I hear runs much better in this machine than this Harbor Freight wire. I do have the correct you can take this thumb screw off and turn this spool around I'm running 030 wire so you want the 030 or 035 those are your two options you can turn that wheel over I may show you that in a future video make sure you have the proper one set I've got the tensioner tightened down and that's the best feed that you're gonna get from this machine or anyway it's working okay for me as far as I can tell So here's my sample and example. This is the only metal I had laying around at the moment so that I could try some welds. And the whole point of showing you these welds is to document the best welds that I personally at my skill level or experience level can produce with the uh, Harbor Freight 90 amp welder. I know there's people out there that can do way better than this, probably the majority of you. Um, but for a first time welder, this is uh, kind of typical and about what you can expect. Now I know there's all kinds of problems with these welds and I've zapped the heck out of this. I, I went through all kinds of welds to try to produce something that was halfway decent. But if you see right here, I'll get this under the light a little better so I don't get a shadow on it. These three rows are welds that I made just this is only about uh, 0.035 thickness I don't know the proper gauge because I don't have a gate uh, a, I don't have a way to measure the gauge but and I and it looks to me after looking at this after the fact like I went I went way too fast on this but I wasn't welding anything together I was just running a bead down here trying to make as straight a line as I could to see what type of what kind of bead I could make but this is so I can compare these welds to the welds that I can do after I make the modifications so not really comparing these welds with anybody else's welding skill but comparing my skill level with the machine before and then my skill level with the machine after the modifications back up here in the corner it's probably the best one that I laid down 
I was having problems burning through, burnt through there, and I burnt through a couple of times down here. That's uh, kind of typical for me anyway with uh, this thin material. And that's just lack of lack of experience, not knowing how to get the machine set up properly. And uh, I just have a difficult time with this real thin stuff. I'm going to try some th some thicker metals, maybe up to one eighth of an inch, once I get uh, the machine complete. But I'm going to throw some beads down on this same material so I can compare when that time comes. But anyway, there you go, guys. So look at my weld performance. As the machine sits right now, bone stock from Harbor Freight with the stock Harbor Freight wire. I know, it's pretty ugly. You're probably tired of looking at it. <laughs> anyway, there's my sample welds. So why am I planning on altering this machine and spending more money on it? I've got 90 in the machine in the Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder and I spent about $40 on parts to convert it from AC to DC. So after I make these modifications I'll have about $130 in this welder. The cheapest DC flux core welder that I could find was around $200. So since I already own the machine, spend another $40 on the parts, uh, make the modifications and see if I can improve it. What am I trying to improve? One, I'm expecting to hopefully have better penetration. So instead of 3 16 material, I'm hoping to be able to weld quarter inch. That's about the best I'm ever going to get out of a 120 volt welder and two is to reduce some of the splatter and make a make a little bit of a cleaner weld it's still non shielded flux core wire so it's never going to be a a pretty weld like a nice like a mig would do um, but it's going to definitely be an improvement and it's going to suit suit my needs for what i'm doing with it so let me give you a quick rundown i'll show you here what i've got on the bench here I'll go into detail on each item as I do that particular step of the modification and I'm also going to do my best to give you links in the description for anybody who runs across this video and is thinking about making these modifications to their welder. Alright, let's look at the parts. Alright, this is approximately $40 for all these parts including shipping to get them to my doorstep. The first and main part is going to be this bridge rectifier, which this one is a 150 amp, 1600 volt bridge rectifier. Pretty, you know, fairly heavy duty. You can get these up to 200 amp, or even, probably even beyond that. But I've seen people using 200s. A couple of people used 100, and uh, they ended up burning it up. So I tried. I thought I'd try the 150. I bought a heat sink to go with it. I think I paid five bucks for that. I bought uh, some used capacitors I found on eBay, 2200 microfarads. I bought three of these and they threw in the the three that I bought. They threw in this little one. It's a 4700 microfarad. I may see. I don't know if I'll use it or not. We'll see. See if I have room. The more you use, from what I understand, the smoother the arc will be. Oh, and that's another one of the benefits of the modification. To try to smooth the arc so I get a smoother weld. We'll see. We'll see if it works out that way. I bought a, uh, this came in a two pack, so I have two. I'm only going to use one. It's a 470 ohm. Uh, I can't think of the name of it at the moment. I'll come up, I'll tell you what that is in a second as soon as I can remember. And then I bought from Harbor Freight one of their upgraded uh, clamps. Now instead of just replacing the clamp, I'm going to replace the entire cable and the clamp. And I'm going to make it detachable with this mini DINs connector so that I can use the ground clamp and cable 
on my new to me that's a 200 amp Chinese inverter stick welder that I wanted to try out that's a whole nother story a video and a whole nother project but that's why I'm going to be making the ground clamp removable and making it with a nice a nice cable and a nice clamp oh these are resistors for I bought the uh, 470 ohm resistors I'm just going to be using one of those so for forty dollars there and 90 in the machine 130 bucks we'll see if I can make the improvements again the improvements I'm going for on this are a little better penetration and smoother arc less splatter that's what I'm hoping for we'll see how it all works out so I hope you hang in there for the videos follow along with this project it should be a lot of fun I plan on having a lot of fun making the videos and uh, making the modifications and we'll see if it works out we'll see if I can make improvements to the uh, Harbor Freight 90 amp so if you like the video give me a thumbs up if you're new and uh, just stumbled across the video and like this sort of thing consider subscribing to the channel and if you want notified of when I post new videos hit the bell anyway thanks again I appreciate you watching and we'll see you guys on the next video